My dad's father, Anton Christensen, went back to Denmark to see his mother after his first wife had died in 1902, and there he met and married Anna Christine Larson. Now, he already had seven children, August, Anne, Mary, Nils, Oscar, Jim, and Clara. And Anna Christine had six, and he brought four of them, Nils, Marie, Martina, and Louis, to America and settled on a farm in Ruthton, Minnesota, while Joanna stayed in Denmark. So, when my dad was born, May the 3rd, 1907, he had 13 half-brothers and sisters. Anna and Clara were there to help Dad grow up until Anna ran away in her teen years because she didn't get along with her new stepmother. Clara stayed and was his big sister at home. He was 11 years old when a tornado ripped through the town of Tyler, just seven miles away from Ruthton. He went to Starr County School, graduating at 15 years old in 1922, and then proceeded to ride his horse to Danebo to learn to speak English. That was the Danish church, seven miles away from their farm. His mother, Anna Christine, never learned to speak English, but he kept his ability to read, write, and speak Danish all of his life, and he maintained his wonderful accent. His faith was strong through his family devotion to the Danish Lutheran Church. His father, Anton, retired and moved to Tyler in 1927, a little house on 121 Marsh Street, one block from downtown, which was only one block long. Dad was 20 years old at the time and found work with the farmers on the threshing machines and lots of odd jobs in the winter. This was around the time that he tried to stop a team of runaway horses that ended up trampling him, and after a long time in bed, he had lost the hearing of his right ear. He was 22 when he rode his horse to Lake Benton, seven miles away, and he saw Mom walking down the street with her friend. He whistled, and then the romance began. We found 50 love letters from Dad to Mom over the next two years, planning and raising money for their wedding. They were married two years after they met by eloping to St. Peter, Minnesota to be married by Mom's aunt and uncle, Reverend Charles Baxter and Rose. Her two brothers were witnesses and when they arrived back in Tyler, Dad's parents came out to the front yard and said, welcome home, Mr. and Mrs. Christensen. Well, they knew because they took him to Arco to get the, the marriage license and then they helped him buy his suit. Dad and Mom moved into a house across the street from his parents and it cost them $10 a month. So they took in boarders and they both worked. She was a maid for the theater owner and he was out on with the threshing crew home after dark working with the farmers. This is when they lost their firstborn daughter who was stillborn and Dad made the box. He picked up the baby at the hospital and with the minister buried her in the Hope Cemetery. Dad was a great employee, and during the first winter of their marriage, he was hired by the Tyler Check Hatchery, which was right next door to his dad's house. He was hired as a janitor, and within two years, he was promoted to manager of the business. When Dad's mother died in 1934, just before Roger was born, they moved in with Grandpa Christensen to attend to his needs until he passed away in 1938, just a couple of months before I was born. He was involved in the community as a member of the Tyler City Council, a member of the school board, and he also worked with the Boy Scouts. He built our swing set in the backyard, the teeter-totter, built me a playhouse, and he helped Roger build a treehouse. And he built a small swimming pool for the summer with room enough for the whole neighborhood. And he put a basketball hoop up at the side of the hatchery where many games were played by the whole neighborhood too. David and Lewis were born about that time and now our family was complete. Well, he and mom went to chicken hatchery conventions and then we as a family traveled many times to our family picnics across Minnesota to the relatives as well as to Lake Benton and to be with our grandparents and great grandparents. He only took one vacation without the family to be with some chicken hatchery men who were traveling to Flin Flon, Canada to fish. 
and after 19 years as a manager of the hatchery, he was promoted in 1952 to run the Maplewood Poultry Farm in Barnum, Minnesota, near Duluth. Which meant that packing everything in the house was going to be tough and moving the whole family lock, stock and barrel across the state. But we did it. And this meant dealing with more employees, picking eggs and baskets and baskets of eggs three times a day, feeding and watering chickens and maintaining the baby chicken ranch outside of town. While in Barnum, he was also involved in the community and on the school board and in the church and with the Boy Scouts. Six years later though, 1958, Dad's employer began to liquidate everything. He thought he was dying. And so after 25 years of service, Dad was without a job, but not for long. He became a feed salesman, and he moved the family to a little pink house on the hill in Barnum. And then there was a truck accident, where he survived, but Tyler was his home, and he still owned his house. So they packed up and moved back to Tyler, where Dan and Lewis graduated from high school. able to purchase the hatchery that he had worked in and he was right back in the business he knew and loved selling feed hatching chickens and with a handshake dealing with his farmer friends all over southern Minnesota so they were back at home getting involved all over again providing the fall assortment of garden gourds for the church Thanksgiving service decorating the Christmas trees at church with the Christmas that mom had made and traveling to California, Montana, Nebraska, Iowa, wherever he had to, to take mom to deliver her wedding cakes and so on. It was about 1965 when Roger and his family were in Guam. I was married living in California, and David was married living in Eldora, Iowa, and Lewis was back from Germany, attending the University of Minnesota. And in 1972, Roger gave them a lifelong dream a trip to Denmark. And then in 1973, they visited me in California playing Santa Claus to Robert and visiting Roger's family in San Diego, David's family in Iowa, while maintaining their obligations at home to the monthly card parties and of course the garden that had to have the tallest sunflowers in town. In 1981, that was the year when they got really busy ready for the 50th wedding anniversary, which meant remembering what their lives were like when they first met and married and the 50 years in between as they wrote very for the pram. The invitations were sent and the preparations were in order. We sprayed Dad's work boots and Mom's hold high heels gold, and then we put flowers in them for the table decorations. Dad loved that his family and friends responded from all over the country to celebrate their anniversary. And when it came time for him to speak in the program, he scratched his head and he told a joke about an old couple who watched a team of horses try to pull a wagon up the hill. When the wife asked her husband why they couldn't pull together like that team, he responded with, well, we could if we had one tongue between us. And of course, we all laughed as he thanked everyone for coming. He was a wonderful storyteller, always closing his eyes and scratching his head just before he told the punchline. He eventually retired and he sold the hatchery and every day he found something else to fix in the basement or in the small garage in the backyard. In 1983, he went to the reunion of the County Star School, and that was the year that Mom needed a difficult surgery for cancer, so they traveled to California, and during Mom's surgery, we called his sister Clara in Montana, who finally admitted that she in fact knew where his sister Anna was. Remember, she had run away from home when he was about six years old. So after mom was well enough to travel, and after 70 years, my dad finally got to hug his long lost sister, who was living about 20 miles from our home in Newport Beach, California. Back in Tyler, 
Tyler, the garage door spring broke one day and the door fell on his foot. The doctor attended to him, but he wasn't getting any better. So we flew dad and mom to California for medical services. At that point, after amputating his leg, one little gangrene cell got away and traveled to his brain, creating a tumor which became inoperable. Mom was with him every day as he grew weaker and he finally passed away. Well, how would I describe my dad? Well, his faith was strong. He was fair to everyone, honest, caring, devoted to his family, and loved by his neighbors, church, and community. I honestly don't remember him being angry, but probably very disappointed with our decisions sometimes. Dad was proud of all of his children, regardless of their struggles, and was always there with an extra hand to help them. He fell in love with Mom at the age of 22, and 63 years later, when he died at 84, he was still in love. Dad is at the Hope Cemetery in Tyler with Mom, their firstborn baby daughter, and Lewis. Mom wanted a tribute to Dad, so we had the glass maker create a mobile for the church with one of his favorite songs, Hear the Bell Toll, which he sings now in Danish and English in the following video. Before we got here? Then we are sure to come home, then we 